So many of you are wanting to start playing around with Docker inside of your home lab environment and containers in general. The best way to learn a technology and to get your feet wet, so to speak, is to have an actual use case to use a certain type of technology, such as Docker containers. I want to introduce you guys today to a solution that I think many of you will love to run in your home lab via a Docker container. It is a solution known as PyAlert. PyAlert can be run as a Docker container inside of a Docker host in your home lab environment and it is a solution that allows you to increase the visibility of network devices inside your lab environment. We're going to dive into PyAlert and see how we can set this up easily inside a Docker container for network security. Stick around. PyAlert is a free and open source solution that allows you to maintain visibility to devices that connect to your network and potentially rogue network devices that may connect to your network via a Wi-Fi access point that you may be running. It is a great solution to allow you to maintain that visibility. A lot of security comes down to having visibility to what is actually happening on your network. I'm a huge fan of ARPWatch and have ran the ARPWatch solution in my home network for many years now. And when I saw PyAlert, it piqued my interest as it extended the capabilities that I was currently achieving with the ARPWatch solution. It is easy to deploy as a Docker container. I have the GitHub page pulled up for PyAlert for the Docker solution, and the developer is Jacob-SK. And Jacob-SK has forked the original PyAlert project to allow the solution to run in a Docker container, which is awesome. And it provides a great use case for spinning up and learning even more about Docker containers. So if you're looking for a quick and easy project to get your feet wet with Docker running containers in your home network and actually providing value to the security of your home network, on the official GitHub page, you can see that PyAlert allows you to scan the devices connected to your Wi-Fi, LAN, and alert you on the connection of unknown devices. One of the cool things that it also allows you to do is actually monitor devices that are currently on the network and if you see disconnects from those devices. So maybe uh, you have devices that you should never see disconnected. Well, PyAlert helps you to have that visibility into potential disconnects or issues that may be going on with devices on your network. And it can certainly help you detect flapping network interfaces or network connectivity. It uses three different scan methods that are noted in the documentation. The first is an ARP scan. So those layer two ARP frames allow you to easily see devices that are connected to a particular VLAN. Also, this has integration with PyHole. So if you're running PyHole in your environment, you can actually hook in PyAlert with your PyHole solution and have additional visibility via the DNS functionality of PyHole. And then method three is DNS mask. A lot of different methods here for scanning to discover these types of devices. Also many notification options. You can use AppRise, Push Safer, Notify. It has various webhook functionality as well as experimental uh, functionality that you can work with your home assistant uh, solution. So really cool features and functionality. Setting up the solution really just involves downloading the required files that are basically template files for configuration of the PyAlert Docker container. Now just to level set, I have a Docker container host that's just a simple Ubuntu server 2204 Docker container host that I have running as a virtual machine in the home lab. So I'm going to place all the required files that I need on this particular host and then use Docker Compose to bring up the container as specified in the documentation. As you can see in the documentation for the PyAlert Docker container, there is a section called Setup and Backups. 
it basically steps you through all of the files that you need to have in place. The first files that we want to download are the pyalert.conf or config file and the version.conf. And there is a link to download those files. So those are the first two files that you need. In addition to those two files, on step number five, we've got under the database backup configuration section, you're going to need this initial PyAlert DB file. And there's also a download link from GitHub for that particular file. So again, the two files, PyAlert.conf and version.conf, and then the PyAlert.db. If you're following example one, you're going to need two additional files, your Docker Compose YAML file, and then an environment variable file. And this is the file that we're basically just configuring our variables that the Docker Compose file is going to use to spin up the Docker container. I'm going to show you guys the tree view of my folder structure, just so you can get an idea of kind of how I've placed everything on my Docker host. Let's take a look at the tree view of my directory structure on my Docker container host, as I think this will help to make more sense of how we need to place the files for PyAlert. Let's do a simple ls, and I want to show you guys I'm just logged in as my Linux admin user. It's a sudo user, and I've got a directory called PyAlert that I have created. And if I change it into PyAlert, I'm going to show you guys tree-a. And if we look at the tree view, I have four directories that I've created underneath the PyAlert folder. I've got a Compose folder that isn't really needed for PyAlert itself. However, I created a directory simply to place my Docker Compose file as well as that environment variable file. So as you can see, I've got the Docker Compose.yaml and the .env file. I've got the config folder that I created. The config folder has the pyalert.conf as well as the version.conf. The back file is just a file backup that I had created before playing around with some settings. The pyalert.conf e is evidently a configuration file that pyalert manipulates in some way, and I'm not really sure exactly how or why. However, I've deleted that file and it gets recreated. Under the DB folder, I have the pyalert.db. That was that original DB file that the link from the GitHub page uh, allows you to download. So I've placed that in the DB folder. All of the other files and folders that you see here were created automatically by pyalert. Those were not files that I created. So simply putting and placing that pyalert.db file in the db folder. I created also a logs directory. The logs directory is not populated by you as the administrator setting up pyalert. This is where pyalert stores the logs that it uses for IP changes and for vendor information as it's looking up those OUI values to uh, map a MAC address to a specific vendor as well as error logs and other logging that it, it uses. So the logs directory, again, is just populated and used by PyAlert. Now, all of these directories are going to get mounted inside of the Docker container. However, I wanted to just give you guys a overview of the directory structure, as this directory structure is the structure that I am referencing in my particular docker compose YAML file, as well as uh, configuring this environment variables file that is used in this process. So I'm going to pull up the docker compose file just so this makes a little bit more sense to you guys. I have the docker compose file open for you guys to see what is contained in this file. And I've literally just copied and pasted from the uh, example one that's found on the uh, pyalert docker container GitHub page. And as you can see, we're pulling the uh, Jacob SK container for PyAlert. We're using the network mode host, so there's no translation between an internal network and your external ports. 
So the port that is configured is actually available on your external IP address for your Docker host. So that kind of simplifies things there. Of course, we're restarting always. We're mapping the volumes for the PyAlert container, and those volumes are the directories that we just went over explaining in that tree view what everything does and where it is placed. And as you can see in the environment, under the environment stanza, we have the time zone, which you're going to see in the env file as I pulled that up. We've got the port and we've also got host user ID and group ID. So let's exit out of this and I'm going to show you guys the env file. And the env file contains just simple directives here that are pulled into that Docker Compose YAML file. So we have global path variables, including the data location, config location, and logs location. And as you note, those again are the directories that we just went over in TreeView. And we have our time zone. For me, that's America, Chicago. And then we've got host user ID and group ID. So for my user, I've got those values uh, placed there. So between those two files, we should be able to, if we have mapped our config files as well as the DB file correctly, our Docker Compose process should be able to successfully bring up this PyAlert Docker container. One of the other pieces of the configuration that I wanted to highlight for you guys as I've been playing around with the configuration that works in my environment. And I wanted to show you guys the scan setting that I have configured in my pyalert.conf file. All the way at the bottom, you can specify how you want pyalert to scan for network devices. The scan method that I settled on was to use the ARP scan method and add the additional interfaces that I need for my multiple VLANs. So if you want to just simply use a single container to scan multiple VLANs, what I configured was additional interfaces on my Docker container host so that that host could have ARP visibility for those additional VLANs. PyAlert has a directive that can take care of that configuration, and that is the scan subnets directive. And you pass in the subnet that you want to scan, as well as the interface that is used to scan that particular subnet. Now, once I introduced this configuration, everything started working correctly. As before, I struggled a bit to have visibility to all of the devices. It would seemingly pick one interface or subnet until I introduced the configuration for the subnet matched to the particular interface that I wanted to use to perform those ARP scans. Now that we have everything in place, let's bring up PyAlert. To do that, that is a simple command. We're going to issue the command docker compose up and we're going to use the daemon flag. And as simple as that, we've got a running container, one of one. If we go back and look at a Docker PS, we can see that I've got PyAlert up for eight seconds. The Docker Compose up command was successful. So let's see if we can navigate to PyAlert. Now that we have the PyAlert Docker container up and running, I have navigated successfully out to the IP address and port 2211 for our host network configured Docker container. As you can see, we get a wealth of information already from our ARP scans from PyAlert. I have 101 devices, 96 connected, 100 new devices. Since this is a new instance of PyAlert, it has discovered those devices running on the network. We've got the presence option where we can actually see when were these devices present on our network. We've got the events menu, so we can see various events, whether devices have connected, whether they have disconnected, and other events to show. And one of the ones that I really like is the network view. As it shows you all of those devices, you can quickly see which of those devices may be offline, what their host names are, if there are DNS records, as well as those IP addresses for those hosts on the network. Under the maintenance menu, we've got various other options that we can configure. We can choose the language, we can choose the skin, we can toggle dark or light mode, we can toggle ARP scan on and off if you don't wanna use that. There are other tools where you can perform some housekeeping with the solution, deleting events, deleting devices, so on and so forth. And then also a backup and restore option. So if you want to uh, quickly backup your database, uh, restore a database from another PyAlert instance. So 
really cool features and functionality here within the PyAlert uh, web interface. And again, just a wealth of information that we get. The alerting is also really, really nice. So with these devices, I can choose to be emailed or use one of those other notification services that are configurable within the PyAlert solution. So super cool. So what do you guys think about PyAlert? I think it is an awesome solution. And so far in my home lab environment, I have really enjoyed the features and visibility that it has provided as to the network devices that I have connected to the home lab network and the various segments of the home lab network. PyAlert solution as well is a great Docker container that I think many would enjoy playing around with. If you're looking for a use case or a particular solution that you can get your feet wet playing around with Docker containers easily in the home lab, PyAlert could very well be that solution that not only provides value, but it allows you to learn at the same time. And I love solutions like that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about PyAlert. Are you using it? Are you using something similar? Are you using something different? Let us know in the comments. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys soon.